I have the pleasure of introducing Nancy Kremens, who's a partner at Gesmer and Up the Grove, and, and uh, Nancy is very well respected, and um, she's going to talk to us about women and entrepreneurship today, but um, Nancy herself has been voted by the Boston Business Journal Ford uh, Under 40 group, 40 Under 40, and Correct. she's been uh, involved in uh, early stages of uh, entrepreneurship and businesses, so we're excited to have you on the show today, Nancy. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. You may be our only 40 Under 40 today. <laughs> wow, that's a nice <laughs> distinguishment. <laughs> So you're going to talk to us about women in the law, correct? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about women in the law and a little bit about women in entrepreneurship because oh, perfect. that is the path that my career has taken. Well, you know, I've uh, earlier in my career, more so probably than now, I, uh, I would have said to you 10 years ago that the majority of my book of business were female entrepreneurs. I would say the majority of my book of business is female entrepreneurs. Well, that's, what, <laughs> I, that's, that's usually great. where female entrepreneurs go nowadays. They go to other females a lot more. Uh, I think the... There are choices, more choices. There are more of us represented, I'd like to think, um, in the profession, and, and also thinking about entrepreneurship in a way that I don't think women have historically. Correct. So you know, I started at Gessmer about five years ago, uh, and when I started at the firm, I had come from a big firm doing litigation and employment work, and quite frankly, didn't know a bed sheet from a term sheet. But when I started working with entrepreneurs, I had... A different under I started to get a different understanding of what the law is and and what it really means to small businesses and early stage and how the legal services I provide in that particular role as a dispute resolver or employment lawyer is critically important to them holistically and not just in that specific vertical so you're more like a, a sort of a partner advisor as you, you absolutely and and they need us to be that because they're usually running quite lean. They don't have a lot of resources people-wise or dollars-wise. So it's our job as their service providers, as their counselors, as their trusted advisors to provide as much value as we can. And that means having a good understanding of their business, of what their pain points are, and how we internally at the firm are working together uh, to maximize their value and to help them grow successful businesses. So I spent a lot of time in my early years learning from my colleagues, my corporate colleagues, my tax colleagues, and, and learning that corporate side of the business so I could have that better understanding. But I felt like I, I wanted a bigger, better education. And when the Pipeline Fellowship brought itself to Boston, uh, which is an angel investor boot camp for women, Interesting. I saw that as a really good opportunity to throw myself into the deep end and learn about angel investing, really learn from the investor side what to look for uh, in entrepreneurs, to learn about what a good pitch sounds like, to meet other women who are in the investing space, and to meet entrepreneurs who are looking for capital to get a more robust understanding of the ecosystem, to build my network, and to be able to provide better advice to my clients. And I came to you know gender equity pretty naturally because I had been involved in the Women's Bar Association from my law school days, you know, focused on gender equity and the law. And so I was curious about how that translated. You know, 17% of equity partners in large law firms are women, even right. after we've been graduating in equal numbers for over 30 years. Why are we stagnating? How does gender bias in its many forms impact the startup space, if any, when it claims to be a meritocracy? And the statistics that I came across were pretty startling, which is, you know, if, you, if a startup team has a woman on their team, they're 18% less likely to be given capital, even though they're 20% more likely to have revenue.